Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create components in Protopy, how do you use components, what you can do with components, so on and so forth. So before we actually figure out what the power of components is, we obviously need to create a component. And for this particular course or this particular video, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a checkbox component. So by default, I'm just gonna say that we have a checkbox label. We're gonna have a check mark on the left. So let's just go ahead and actually do that. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be our label. It's really important to go ahead and rename the layers on the left so we can recognize them. This is gonna be our check that I'm just gonna inherit from the Font Awesome library so we can have that check. And then we also need a group around it. So I'm just gonna create a group command G and let's just go ahead and give it a width of maybe 32 by 32 pixels. Or maybe that's a bit too much. 24 by 24 should be sufficient. So I'm going to center it. I'm going to give the group a border and a radius of 4. Sorry, a radius of 4, not a uh, border width of 4. And I'm going to reduce the border width to maybe something like this. Let's just go ahead and center it. And yeah, so this is going to be our check container. And the whole thing obviously can be in a group itself. And we can just, again, position it like this. Let's just center this as well. So here we have our component. Let's just go ahead and center this thing as well. So I'm going to say it's going to be, uh, sorry, let me just go ahead and close Loom because that sometimes conflicts with some of the shortcuts in Protopy. So, and then I have basically centered this. So now we have this checkbox and now let's just go ahead and create and in some interactions with it. I'm going to say I want to add a trigger. So anytime a person, let's just go ahead and make this whole thing checkbox. Anytime a person clicks on, sorry, clicks, taps on the checkbox, like the whole checkbox itself, something should happen. And the first thing that should happen is, let's just go ahead and actually reduce the opacity of this check. So this is the default state. Now, if anyone clicks this, I want something to happen. First of all, I want the color to change. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say, I want the color for the check container to change to something maybe like blue. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pick a blue that looks fine to me, probably this makes sense. And I'm gonna increase the opacity to 100. So this thing is gonna become blue. And then I can say, I want uh, the border of the same check container to be, uh, to be let's say zero in width because we don't want the border here. And then I can also say that the opacity of the check mark that we created, which is this, should actually increase to 100. So now let's go ahead and preview this. So if I'm checking this, as you can see, it's coming up. However, I think the check mark that we've placed by default should be white since we're giving it a blue color. So let's just go ahead and do that. So if I click on it, as you can see, we have the checkbox that's appearing here really nicely. One thing we can do is we can say, we can add a condition. And the condition can be, because obviously once we tap on it again, something should happen. So we should say that there needs to be some sort of a condition going on here. So I'm gonna say if I plus, plus on this, then there needs to be a condition applied. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna apply a condition. And we're gonna figure out what the condition is gonna be. So I'm gonna say the condition is gonna be whether the check mark has an opacity of 100 or if it has an opacity of zero. So I'm gonna say if it has an opacity of zero, all of these things that I'm doing right now should actually move below this condition. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this whole condition. I'm gonna say if the checkbox has an opacity of 100, I want you to go ahead and make the border uh, that I had just again, go to one again. This opacity of the check mark should return to zero and this color should return to white similar to what we have right now. So I'm just gonna choose white here. So now if we preview this, we click on the checkbox, it's appearing, click, it again, click on it again, it's again a toggle sort of a thing. So now that we have this component done, we can basically create a component by using the create component button here. I'm gonna go ahead and create this component. As you can see, this component now appears and I can go ahead and I can now duplicate this multiple times. So if I preview this, as you can see, everything is working because these are separate components. If I wanna access the component panel, I can obviously press Command Option 5. Command Option 5, let me just go back here. So Command Option 5 obviously just allows me to see all the components that I have. Currently, I'm actually viewing the Material Design UI kit, so I was seeing the components there. 
This is again really powerful because in the components library, you also have public libraries and you can also create your own personal libraries that you can access. But if you wanna, let's say import the component anywhere, you can just go ahead and say, I wanna import it here. You can preview the file and as you can see, that's working as well. Now, obviously I can have overrides as well. I can say that this thing is gonna be item one and let's just go ahead and actually place it here. Let's just go ahead and actually place this a bit on the center. This is gonna be, I, I don't know, apple, <coughs> mango, and then cherry. And I don't wanna to take too much time, so let's just go ahead and remove these ones. And as you can see, those component overrides are preserved, so it's not that big of a deal. Everything's working fine. Similarly, if I want it, I can go ahead and I can say that the border in this particular case is gonna be, let's say this, the radius can be, I don't know, 100. If I wanted to do so, I can, and that override would also be preserved. And as you can see, the component is really powerful in this case because it's actually doing some of the changes that I've mentioned it, but not messing with some of the other changes that exist. So it's really good in that sense. So now if you wanna go ahead and let's say revert this particular component, you can go ahead and select the whole thing. You can say, Sorry, you can select the whole thing and you can say reset overrides and it's gonna again uh, reset the overrides that you've done. Or you can go ahead and basically go to the main component if you want to. You can swap the instance if you had multiple instances and stuff along those lines. And you can also say that I want as a main component. So as you can see now, this thing is the main component. Anything I change here now, uh, will actually reflect on some of the other changes. So if I go ahead and change this to, let's say, sorry, not this, but this border to, let's say, red, since this thing now is actually the main component, you can consider this a representation of the main component. Any changes you make here would actually be reflected across all of the instances of the component. So that can be done as well. And if you wanna know if that's the main component or not, you can see the panel on the left. If it has a rectangular shape and a fill on it, then that's the main component. If you just wanna change it back to the instance, you can do that. Now, if you wanna go ahead and modify the main component by going to the component panel, then you can do that here as well, just by double clicking it, or just by going to the scene and saying, go to main component, and that's gonna take you to the same place. So that's all that we're gonna have for the components. Right now, I hope this probably clears how you go ahead and create components, how do you use them, what the power of it is, some of the overriding capabilities, and also how to go ahead and insert um, instances, how to use an instance as a, rep as a representation of the main component and stuff along those lines. So hope this video was beneficial to you. If there's anything else you would like me to explore in components, definitely let me know. But do subscribe, do hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.